Welcome to Plowman's Backyard. My name is Kendra and today we are doing a video on harvesting. So here in Canada, most of our harvest season ends up being around late September, early August. And the reason being is because we tend to get an early frost, which means we got to get a lot of that winter crop out of the garden and into the house before the frost comes. There are some exceptions, kind of like rutabaga, beets and carrots really do well with a little bit of frost. It really sweetens them up. So we won't be touching anything like that, but we do need to harvest a lot of things. We've got celery that needs to come in before um, the frost comes. I want to collect some of the onions, uh, potatoes, there's still beans, there's still peppers, all that stuff needs to be collected. Now, today is September the 29th, which is the harvest moon. So that is essentially what this video is going to be um, surrounding. The harvest moon actually dates back as far as before electricity. And the harvest moon was a time when the farmers of that time used the harvest moon for over consecutive days for proper light to be able to collect their crops well into the night. It's um, a large moon that gives off a lot of light. Today, typically people don't do that, but there is a huge harvest here around this time of year. Farmers do use moons for a lot of things. I know that I always wait um, in the spring. I wait for a specific moon to come before I do my planting on my sensitive crops. So why not use a moon for harvest time? We've actually already had a few nights that have gotten really close to zero here over the last couple of weeks. Um, we're looking okay for this week and next week coming, but that could change at any time. We even had one spell in August where it went almost really close to zero and we were kind of a little bit worried, but we still have a lot of crop to get out back there. The zucchinis and the cucumbers are still growing strong. Until um, we get frost, I will continue to harvest them. Well, the first thing here is I'm going to be harvesting my hazel birds. Um, I've got a video actually talking a little bit about when to harvest these in the correct time. This one's got a couple on it. So these I usually take in and dry in the house and then I store them. Believe it or not, this one actually got a little bit demolished from the plow, but this is the exact same plant over here and this tree is much bigger. But this thing still gives off a lot of um, nuts. Now, I will say that the nuts are a bit on the bitter side, so they're not really something like you would think like a hazelnut would taste like, but it's protein and it's food. And these are great little privacy bushes. I love them. And they're hardy for here. They're got, I think they're like a zone two or a zone three. And they're called a hazelbert because they're mixed between a hazelnut and a filbert. This is kind of what they would look like when they're dried up. A whole bunch of clusters just under this one little spot. Three of them. They're quite sticky. They're not done. Oh, those still have a little bit more to go, but wow, check that out. We have our harvest here of hazelberts. Um, I think we did get more than last year. Uh, for some reason, the larger bush didn't produce as much as this little thing did. But uh, anyways, we have a lot more to do, so... Let's get on to the next. Well, next what we have is some zucchinis and I've got zucchinis kind of spread out all over the garden, mainly because we love zucchinis and I want to make sure they grow. And sometimes things don't always grow in one spot, might, might grow in another. So there's a couple different spots. We got to go check around, check on our zucchinis, but there's a huge one here. So we're going to harvest it now. There we go. <laughs> that's a big one. But anyways, I don't mind the big ones. And there's one that's rotted here. So I'm going to take that off. Um, and we've got a couple more coming. So at least when we harvest this one, it's going to give life to the next. But this is a Black Beauty zucchini. We really like having those. And we've got another one coming in this plant. Uh, it's only about so long. So we're going to let that grow a little bit more as well. And we're going to see what other ones we've got growing here too. Okay, so over here we actually have our yellow fin zucchinis. Just going to leave some of the smaller ones. We've still got a couple more days of harvest, but this is a, a really good size one. we still got two more here. And we've got a couple here. This one's been eaten. It'll go to the chickens. They'll love that. We've got some more coming, which is awesome. We love the yellow ones. Well, we love them all, really. For some reason, the 
this one cracked. So this is a gray zucchini. I don't really know what happened to that. Anyways, another chicken treat. And our cucumbers haven't done really great this year. But it looks like they did get a touch of something, a little bit of frost or something. Um, we got two left on this one and I did pick a bunch um, last week because I'm going to be making some pickles. So there's a nice cucumber there. We'll be making some more bread and butter pickles. They seem to be, they seem to be our favorite here at our house anyway. We still got grapes coming. They're doing pretty good. These ones here, they're not like the sweetest kind, but they're a nice big grape. And we got these grapes here. These are my favorite. These are the Somerset grapes. Super, super sweet grape. They're my favorite. They're pretty well all done, but the other more tart ones are just, um, they're ripening up now. So these are way better than buying them in the store. A few more clusters in there. I'm going to have to grab them if they make them to the house. <laughs> When the birds are here, you know they're good. Huh? Animals don't tend to eat something that isn't ripe or ready. So another thing to really harvest uh, this time of year is our seeds. So we let a lot of our crops tend to go to seeds so that we have seed for the following year. So now is also the time to collect seeds, not just food, so that we have it for the spring. These are our, our lettuce seed and we've got um, some other seeds, um, we got some dill seeds as well as radish seeds um, coming over there that we're going to need to collect. And when you're planting your lettuce, if you're wanting to save for seed, try to plant um, the same lettuce within the same area so that you're not um, cross-pollinating your lettuces, unless you don't mind that. But I like to try and keep things be as pure as possible. Here, um, it's all dried up and now we've got the seeds right there. I'm just going to go through. Um, I usually collect these little containers, store them in here. So I've just got a bunch of lettuce seeds in here and uh, we'll sift those out a little bit later. But for now, it's just collecting um, the seeds so that we have them for next year. So you want them to be good and dry. That's the only thing. They should break right open if they're dry enough. You don't want them wet. So it's good to collect them on a day that it hasn't rained in a few days so that they are pretty dried out as well as you don't want to collect them first thing in the morning when there's dew and uh, it's amazing the amount of lettuce seeds you can get from just one plant really easy to do and I highly recommend you know just saving that little bit of money and having that sustainability of having your own lettuce this one here is not quite ready but they tend to go to a yellow flower and then um, they dry up into um, kind of like the dandelion fuzz and then what is left behind is the seed pod. You really should never have to buy lettuce seeds, really. I mean, we're a late season garden here. So, I mean, the fact that we can get our own lettuce seeds or any other seeds for that matter, tomatoes are really easy to, to uh, save seeds from. If, I mean, if we can do it in such a short growing season, other places can do it as well. I'll just keep collecting and we'll move on to harvesting the next things. And in case anyone was wondering how our strawberries were doing, um, I've got a strawberry plant here. I have about, I don't know, five or six in this one. Say we have like eight or nine in this one. And these are the strawberries that I saved from just um, kind of skinning the strawberry and planting the whole like skin and seeds of the strawberry. So they grew pretty well. They're just a little slow. So I'm gonna have to probably bring them in for the winter. An easy way, an easy method of saving some strawberry seeds and producing uh, your own plants. The next thing on our list is our potato patch. This one here that I'm working in is actually quite a large potato patch. We have planted white and red potatoes and they are looking wonderful. We have actually two potato patches. One of the, I think the most dreaded um, harvesting is probably the potatoes mainly because it is a very intensive labor um, usually we use a fork and just kind of dig out the plants the ground was a little on the um, tough side this time so we ended up digging by hand um, I'm thankful that my daughter was able to help me out but we are really happy with the amount of potatoes that we got last year I think we got about 200 pounds of potatoes just from this one patch um, I'm curious to see how the crop is going to go this year. Most of this day was dedicated, pretty much all the day was dedicated to getting the potatoes out of the garden so that we could get them into a nice 
dry and dark place just to get them to dry up before we store them uh, in the burlap bags. Um, we did pretty well last year. We had tons. We even had tons for seeds. So um, what you see here, um, what we're getting from this year's crop is our potatoes to eat for the winter plus our seeds to plant for next year. Potatoes is really rewarding to grow because you can get such a plentiful harvest in just about any soil type. Well, the next thing we went and investigated was to see how our squash was. And this year, I have to say, our squash did not do well. Like many other things, um, including our tomatoes and our cucumbers, we got very minimal squash. But i um, happy with what we did get, but it was really a sad year. So um, we really enjoy squash for the winter. The other thing was our peppers actually didn't do too bad, but... Um, we did harvest a lot of our peppers when it was time for canning our salsa and stuff. So this is just the leftovers of what is still coming. These two plants I'm actually going to be taking inside for the winter and replanting um, them again for next summer. So just giving them a head start. So these are our green bell peppers and our um, jalapeno peppers. And they've done really well as well, just providing us with some good stuff for canning. And then we're on to beans. One of my favorite things about gardening is I love having beans. The beans didn't do too bad. They were off to a really slow start this year, but we ended up getting quite a bit put away for the uh, winter months. Plus we've been eating them fresh, but they were a bit late starting, so we didn't get as much as usual. So these beans here, I left um, specifically for uh, bean seeds. You can see that the beans are very large. Um, they are well rounded in where their beans are growing. So they are, I like to save specifically a few plants just specifically for seed for next year. Thankful again to have my daughter. Um, she's helping um, this year with the harvest and she's harvesting the onions. The onions, um, they were doing okay. Not as great as a harvest as last year, but I love having onions for the winter. They store really well at our place. Now this one's a good one. And Hannah's just going over and checking out the squash plant again. Once again, every few days, just uh, keeping track and making sure we're harvesting zucchinis as they come up. One of our second favorite things to grow is chard. If you've been watching us here, you know that our family loves to eat chard. We can harvest this right up until the snow comes. Um, but we are just going to be harvesting some to put away for winter. But mostly we are going to be eating it probably for dinner. The next thing is cleaning up our tomatoes. Our tomatoes did terrible this year I have to say one of the worst years we've had up here so far and the frost has got them um, we had a light frost a few weeks ago and it seemed to um, really hurt our tomato plant I'm just going through and picking through what I can salvage and cleaning up the rest and we are collecting them to give to the chickens because we have like kind of no waste here anything that we don't use the chickens or the bunny can use these are specifically chicken treats as you can see the chickens are loving the fruit and vegetables from the garden as always if you have a little homestead and little garden chickens just complement it really well they like the all the cleanup and all the extras that you're not using the chickens are doing well um, started laying again they went through another molt still collecting lots of eggs and still have lots of chickens around but I'm happy that they're able to have some fresh food from the garden. Well, now it's time to harvest our celery. It's probably the last thing I'm going to be doing for this harvest moon harvest. Uh, like I said, there's a few beets and rutabaga, but they tend to do really well when frost comes. So I'm not worried about that. I'm really glad because last year we got a big um, frost. There was a bit of a surprise and it ended up kind of killing off the celery. So I wasn't able to enjoy it. Really looking forward to, um, I think I'm going to be freezing some of this and the wonderful thing about celery it's like it is so good just to make um, if you want it to make vegetable broth if you want to use it in soups you can freeze dry it you can dehydrate it you can freeze it and you can use even the leaves so all of it is beneficial we can use the stalk and the leaves um, it's all edible and the taste of celery is not at all like you get it in the store. It is a more intense celery taste. So it is by far superior than getting it from the store. Um, this variety here is the Utah Tall variety that I got from MI Gardener. Um, that's where I got the seeds for this variety and we started them indoors. All right, so this here is one celery stalk. As you can see, very healthy, very green. I am 
there's a lot here. I think I have, I don't know, at least maybe 12, 15 plants. So it's looking pretty good. That looks, it looks great. Anxious to try a piece of celery. Looks so good. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, you gotta grow your own celery. It's phenomenal. It's delicious. Wow, the flavor is incredible. It's strong, but man, is it good. It's really good. We use the leaves and soups and stir fries and casseroles and there's a lot you can do with celery. We'll be taking them in and washing them up. This is amazing. Wow. Never had celery until you've had it from the garden. And the same with the rutabaga. The taste is like, you can't even compare the taste of rutabaga from the store to rutabaga straight out of the garden. Um, you're missing out. <laughs> I know in previous videos, I blanched um, the celery. It does um, lighten the color of the green, but as for the taste and the use, I, I don't think it's something that I have to do. I like it just like this, plain. Like a bouquet of celery. Well, this just about sums up our harvest moon harvest for this video of 2023 garden season. We'd like to thank Hickory Croft Farm for putting on this collaboration and the hashtag harvest moon harvest. It is great for us um, late season gardeners or cold climate gardeners that um, tend to do a lot of our harvesting in September. We still do some harvesting in August, but September and into August before the frost comes is a big harvest time. We've still got some things here to harvest at Plowman's Backyard. Looking forward to getting the garden cleaned up. When spring comes, it's very exciting to get out in the garden, get your hands dirty and get things planted. But by the time harvest season comes around and you've been canning for a month or more, you just can't wait for it to be done. Even though we're so wonderfully blessed by all the harvest that we do get, I can't wait to wrap it up and get into winter as much and as much as I'm not looking forward to the snow it's a definitely a nice break from all this work that happens. So thanks for joining our video. I hope that you've enjoyed this year's garden season and I look forward to seeing you in next year's 2024 garden here at Plowman's Backyard.